Eye-opener. That was fast. Though the corporations denied that there was only $3 in their budget for the contract with the International Longshoremen's Associations, they sure did find the extra dollar that the dock workers were seeking pretty fast. The strike starts on October 1st and basically ends or is postponed until January, only three days later. It's almost as if that extra dollar was always available. Maybe the big wigs had to take a haircut, or maybe the shareholders did. The big takeaway, however, is that the money is there. They just don't want to share. And if this issue is true, it means that the money is always there. That's why so often you hear about corporations laying off the lower paid employees while the higher ups like the CEO always have the craziest deals. Too often in America, you hear about a company failing or filing for bankruptcy while the white collars bosses get millions in shares, salary and severance. If the CEO of a company can ruin the company, why isn't failing up available to everyone at that company? It's almost as if the more important jobs are those done by the lower wage employees. It's almost as if a monkey could actually run these companies because to be honest, a monkey could just as easily bankrupt a company. Come to think of it, do we even need the monkey or their human counterpart in that corner office? Questionable. Getting back to my point, it seems that if the companies that have temporarily met the demands of the dock workers, which could ultimately mean a 62% wage increase, why couldn't every or almost every company increase wages by 10%? Why couldn't companies have been increasing wages to keep pace with inflation like they used to in America? The way they used to before Bill Clinton or Ronald Reagan or one of the other supposed leaders who was looking out for our best interests? A system in which the minimum wage increases at the same rate as inflation sounds like a much more fair system. It sounds like a much more balanced system. It also sounds like a sustainable system, at least more sustainable than giving a small group of assholes all the money. Let me rephrase that as to not be hyperbolic. It sounds more sustainable than giving a small group of assholes most of the money. We do get to sleep enough to stay poor. So there's that. So the strike is on hold. I sure hope the powers that be don't use this delay to do some underhanded crap. In retrospect, underhanded crap seems more like these companies' policies than fair and balanced. It's as if American capitalism thrives on business models that screw over the worker. Just look at all the companies that have been subsidized by the federal government while demonizing the same offer being extended to regular citizens. Look at Walmart and the fact that every Walmart store benefited to the tune of $1 million, which was how much its employees received in government assistance to offset its poverty wages. You can look that up for yourself. I've got a monkey to catch. In 2018, Chris Osman wrote a book highlighting the problems humanity would face if more power, wealth, and control were funneled to a small cohort of individuals, groups, or organizations. In that book, Mr. Osman provided solutions from himself and others, to the inevitable problems we would all face. In it, he also provided a means for the public to analyze, compare, and contrast the words and deeds of those we've chosen to follow against our real-world experiences. To this end, Mr. Osman provides the means for readers to disseminate information as provided by their new sources of choice, their elected officials, and any other authority they choose to follow. The book, titled Solutions, Enough Complaining. Let's Fix America offers a means to hold leaders up to not just a higher standard than is currently accepted, but one that will improve lives. Don't be a monkey's uncle. Click the link below and get your copy today.